Europe's biggest tech show is a wrap, and for a lot of us, it was a different kind of show. This year we saw tons of mid-range phones, tons of smart speakers, but just one premium smartphone, this time around from Sony. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Samsung's trying to make 8K TVs happen already, and LG's not far behind. So let's start there. This is the best of IFA 2018. So Samsung kicked off things with the first 8K TV you'll actually be able to buy. Its QLED series is being updated with three new television sets, and they run in sizes from 65 inches to 85. The company's 8K OLED series will have built-in processing to upscale content to 8K, which means adding a buttload more pixels. That said, we wouldn't start saving just yet. It's going to take a lot of time before there's any native 8K films, content, documentaries and the rest to watch on these huge sets. Meanwhile, on the other side of IFA, LG was presenting its own 8K TV. Its model is actually OLED, which is the more capable technology. LG's model was also three inches bigger than Samsung's biggest 8K TV set, of course. Giant 8K TVs aside, LG and Samsung didn't have much else for us to check out here in Berlin. LG took the chance to launch its first Android One mobile phone, the LG G7 One. This is its first Android One phone, which offers pure Android baked in. None of the LG fluff, none of the LG apps, just the same kind of experience you'd get on a phone like Google's own Pixel range. It wasn't the only company revealing its Android One wares. Motorola also revealed its own offering, the imaginatively titled Motorola One, which looks an awful lot like an iPhone X, but costs a fraction of the price. But if you like your phones a little bit different, how about Honor? The Huawei sub-brand revealed a gaming phone that's pretty much dedicated to PUBG mobile gamers. Besides a laundry lift of very cool features like vibration feedback and 3D virtualized surround sound, a combination of hardware and software means that GPU boost can both increase graphical fidelity as well as shrinking power consumption. This should all hopefully culminate into a gaming device that keeps frame rates stable and ensure you win your next PUBG match, as long as, well, you know, Wi-Fi holds out. But I know what you're here for. You want to hear about premium smartphones. And this year at IFA, if you wanted to see a premium smartphone, you had to see Sony's new Xperia XZ3. This device packs what Sony believes to be the best mobile screen out there. The final statistics, it's an eight inch Quad HD Plus OLED HDR display. Sony's own Bravia TV team also helped out with the phone and it's reassuringly glossy, beautiful, premium looking. You're getting what you're paying for and if you've liked any of Sony's more recent flagships, you'll probably like what you see here, even if it is very similar to those phones. Now Huawei, for all its troubles selling devices in the US, took to Europe's IFA to reveal its new mobile chip, the Kirin 980. Now, 7 nanometer architecture might not get you hot and bothered, but it should. This is what's going to be in your next smartphone, and it'll mean more power and longer battery life. Rumor has it there'll also be a 7 nanometer chip, if not Huawei's, in the next iPhone. Huawei also had its own smart speaker that looks like Google Home, but actually has Alexa inside, and is also a 4G router. Technology. IFA loves weird gadgets, and Huawei's weird AI Cube smart speaker wasn't the only one. We also saw conceptual e-ink sneakers from New Balance. We saw a water massage eye mask. We saw the future, obviously, of mobility. Get rid of that hoverboard as well, because Segway has something new. Yeah. Now, Segway of Segway fame's e-skates are actually less dangerous than they look. It might not be the future of mobility, but if you have $400 and some very smooth surfaces to play on, it could be a fun way to kill time. But if you don't like moving, how about Acer's weird gaming chair cockpit thing? At 1.5 meters tall, it takes up a lot of space, but it can house three gaming monitors as well as your super powerful gaming PC. There is one glaring omission, however, the lack of a cup holder. But if you're here for laptop news, then Asus and Lenovo both had their own stories to tell. Now, Asus reinvented its entire Zenbook line with new slender bezels all the way around the screen, even on its hybrid models. The new laptop still managed to keep a webcam up at the top of the display through, I assume, what can only be described as witchcraft. At the same time, Lenovo unveiled a new series of both laptops and Chromebooks. The ThinkPad X1 Extreme might be the most tempting just because it sounds so bloody powerful. So if you've been looking for either power or design, this might be a great time for you to lay down cash for a new laptop. 
So how was IFA 2018? Well, it was a show of niches. A lot of companies here finally get a chance to shine outside of the shadow of big companies like Samsung, Apple, Microsoft and the rest. There are interesting things, but they're for very specific use cases. There's no mainstream hit that we saw at this year's show. And that's what happens when the tech product cycle is so relentless. Not every trade show can be a big deal, but it never stops. Let's not forget, next week, it's Apple.